In this video, you will find inspiration and idea how to boost your traffic using a train control software. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial about traffic control software and what the software can do for you and your layout. For me, it's been probably the most awesome thing I've implemented on my layout since I made it to digital <laughs> and therefore something I really want to share with you uh, because it enriches the, the operation of the, the layout even further. It takes it really to, to the next level. The good thing with this software is that it's for free. It's an open source type software, which is maintained by a German guy called Rob and, and a lot of people around him. Uh, and open source, of course, everyone can contribute. So uh, it's free to download, free to use, but hey, make a contribution if you s decide to use it. I make a donation every year to the, the team to make sure it uh, remains as awesome as it is. But there is a few steps to take to get to the point where everything is set up and working and that's the steps we're gonna make today. A majority of the time I run my trains manually using either a smartphone or a control handle. I soon realized that I was missing some additional train movement on the layout when I was operating the trains manually. The layout itself was capable of running at least five trains simultaneously. That triggered me to look for some traffic control software. A traffic management software needs three components. The software itself will be run on a PC or a Macintosh or it can actually run also on a Raspberry Pi or a really simple computer. This one is just $10 or 10 euros. You of course need a control or command station for your digital system. This is a Merklin Central Station 2. But the traffic management software supports a wide range of command stations. Then you also need an internet router. What's important with that? This was actually the cheapest one I can find in store. It needs to have wireless support and it must be possible to set fixed IP addresses for connected devices. You can of course also connect your command station and PC to the internet wireless router you may already have in your home. With these three devices on hand, all you need to do is to connect them all together. Once you got the devices connected to the router and powered up, you will just set fixed IP addresses in the router for them. Now you may wonder, why all this talk about fixed IP address and what is that IP address really? Well, a device in a network like this has a name and that's its IP address. In order to have these two devices talking to each other, they need to know each other's name and they need to have the same name every day and every time you switch the devices on. That's why it's important to set the fixed IP addresses and that is done in the router settings. Let's now download the software from rockrail.net. On the web page, you'll find a short introduction to the software. You will also have the documentation in various languages, such as English and German. Here you have also support forums if you have questions. Up here is the download. We click on that and end up on downloads. Here we have the downloads for Windows. My device here, my PC, the laptop is a Windows 32-bit system. So I download that. It ends up here and I just double click that to get the installation going. We will not spend so much time with the installation process. It's very straightforward. Instead, have a look at the documentation. Here you have Rockrail first steps. This is something I really recommend to you who is new to Rockrail. Just click on that and you will have a guide to get started. That guide will help you to get Rockrail to speak to your command station. And the next action after that is to enter all of the locomotives you may have on that command station into Rockrail with its addresses and other things. Then we need to set up a block scheme. That's a kind of diagram for what your layout looks like from a Rockrail perspective. So let's add the first block. This block is by default called BK1, which is uh, 
maybe not so clear, I rather call it main station track one. Now we have here, it's, it's a station, I want it trains to wait there by default. It has a catenary, that's overhead wires. And BBT is uh, something we'll go through later. It has to do with the stopping of train, the precision stopping and how the train break at the station. Then every block needs two sensors. One enter sensor and one in sensor. Now we got everything of the basic components here. But hey, what is that block really? And what is the length of the block, etc.? Well, this is one of the most common questions I receive. In the initial phases of the layout design planning, you have to define the maximum train lengths, both for the main lines and for some branch line you may have. If you plan to divide your locomotive or engine depot with blocks, then those should have the, at least the length of the longest engine or locomotive you plan to have on your layout. The maximum train length for the main lines on my layout is engine, oh, well, locomotive plus 12 normal cars. For the branch line, it's just 6 cars plus engine. And in locomotive stations, I have set the maximum length to 35 centimeters. That's approximately one foot. Now, sometimes, well, not very seldom, actually quite often, you want to run over long train because it's so cool. Then you also need to have capacity for the overlong trains and a definition for how long could we accept an overlong train to be. The green tracks in this uh, diagram of one of my two staging yards defines the maximum standard train length for the main lines. The blue tracks is the maximum overlong trains. The black line here I've added is a mirror. See, I've transformed the two blue lines into a vitrine section in front. So instead of three tracks, it looks like it's six tracks with just overlong trains on display. Isn't that nice? I found this idea on a forum and I really liked it and implemented it onto my layout. Another thing you can do with these two overlong track is to divide them into two separate blocks. All of a sudden you can now store four of the branch line trains here down in the staging yard, in the shadow yard as well. Let me now show you how easy it is to make a block with its two sensors. This is one of my branch lines. I want the first sensor to be here. This one will give the impulse that uh, the train has entered the block. And the second sensor will be here, which tells the system that the train now is fully in the block. We will now make a small cut in the rails. No. Easiest way to implement sensor on a layout is by using a motor grinder. I use a thin disc which is uh, intended to cut metal. I now use the motor grinder to cut away a piece of the rail on one side. This uh, length equals about to 10 centimeters or 3 inches. The purpose with this exercise is to make it electrically isolated from the rest of the rail. So I do the same thing on the other side. So now I got my two sensors. Now it's important to squeeze a drop of glue into that space between the rail pieces which we just created. This prevents the rails from moving after a lot of train passing. Next thing is to connect this rail piece to our feedback decoder. In the Merklin system it's called S88. And this is easily soldered to the rail piece. I typically make these connections away from the viewer so they're not visible when you watch the layout. Now Merklin has this uh, K-track and the rails on that is made from stainless steel. That is somewhat tricky to solder something to. It needs a special flux. So this I picked this one up in the stores. It's actually not allowed to buy for others than professional use because it's uh, very hazardous. But uh, keep looking. Some hobby shops actually have it for sale anyway. 
Okay, here you see the setup now. The two orange wires should be connected to the uh, S88 feedback decoder. The middle piece between these sensors in that rail also need a new connection to uh, power, which probably is your command station. Okay, now we got the system set up. We got all of the locomotives in the database of Rockrail. We have drawn our block scheme. Now I want to give you some examples of what you can do with this software. The one function I use the most is to have some mainline traffic whilst I'm manually operating the switcher in the yard. This is uh, done uh, using uh, something called schedules in Rockrail, which uh, equals to timetables. It defines the route for the train, where it should go, between which blocks and at what time. By doing that you can get the goods train to pass on sidings rather than platform access. You can also have the signals connected to the system so they show the correct aspect when the train passes the signal. Another very useful function in this system enables you to have really high precision stopping and beautiful retardation of the train at stations and sidings so it doesn't stop abruptly but very prototypically. This is done by enabling a function called BBT both on the locomotive, you see here it's the tab for BBT. It should also be enabled on the details. And then clicking on the BBT, you can see that the computer, the system has calculated the exact rate of braking in each of the blocks where it should stop. Another very useful function is the commuter train function. This allows you to swap placing or actually swap direction of the commuter train when it arrives to a terminal station and then continue in the opposite direction going from that location. This function can of course be used also for maintenance trains and also to simulate movement in the yards and in the industries without operating them manually. How it's all put together? Well, there is a function for within the schedule which allows you to swap placing. So if you have a look at this auto S-Bahn, the S-Bahn train was the orange commuter train you saw in the video. At this block it will swap placing. Also here it will swap placing, meaning it will continue in the opposite direction from where it came from. In this I also added actions. We will come to actions in a few minutes, but you can see here in the last block it switches off the sound of the motor, which is a very good thing because it's annoying to have all of the motors of the 46 Locus enabled at the same time. Another of my favorites, since I do a lot of video and photo, is timed meetings. This is uh, really that the two trains arrive at the station or a siding at the same time every time. It's uh, very enjoyable, I think. Let's go back to Rockrail to see how this can be set up. Click on Tables, select Schedules and then you get into a schedule. This is my schedule for the Auto Diesel. You have all of the blocks with the train passes. You can add extra block if you like. And here is the time processing. You can either have absolute timing. Then the train will depart at that time. You can have a relative timing and then it will depart as soon as possible. And then relative to that departure time, stop and continue according to that. You can also do hourly, which is what I use for those timed meetings. I simply just measure the running time to that siding or station from each of the departure blocks. And then add that time into the schedule and done. Then of course the trains will not depart immediately from the shadow station or the staging yard, but await the correct moment and everything will work fine if there is no train queue or other things that delays the traffic. 
And if you like, you can have the trains going back to its original position and precision park there with the engine switched off. Now this software really has a ton of interesting and amazing features to choose from, but another one I like especially is the engine management. You know, I have this uh, locomotive or engine waiting track. It is to replace steamers along the line because uh, the operational life between each maintenance is very short for steamers. It's a bit better for diesels, but they need to be fueled. And in order to get fueled and, and uh, maintained, they need to go to the engine depot or the locomotive station. The depot is divided into blocks for functions like water, coal and sand filling. So what this schedule do is that it uh, sends the locomotive or the engine from the waiting track up to the locomotive station. It then uh, tells the locomotive to stop at the first maintenance point. And for that block I have activated actions. And if you open the action tab here you can see that it will play the f sound function horn that alerts me that the uh, train has arrived to the to the loco depot the system then triggers a wave file to be played which i've just you know spoken in the microphone saying that uh, the the engine is handed over to the locomotive station staff for maintenance next thing it switches off the motor or the engine sound so it simulates that the motor is switched off etc etc you can add different actions to a uh, entering of the block like that and with uh, all that done it goes into the engine shed or the locomotive shed to wait for its next assignment well, I hope I've given you a flavor of what this system does for me on my layout and uh, given you some ideas of what it possibly can do for you on your layout, the way you operate your layout. I hope you liked this video about traffic control software and how to set it all up. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up. Did you know that this video channel is made possible because a few of you viewers are kind enough to support the channel? So think of this as a low cost magazine subscription. Get over to Patreon and set up a support account there. Or make a one off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe and enable the little bell and you will get the notification once next video gets published. Until that happens. See ya.